It's time to do an all countdown podcast. We got Trey Amos, we got Damon Payne, we got Keon Keeley. We got all three of those guys. That's 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 where it's going to stop. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into the Lockdown Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Doing great. Three defenders today. Three defenders. Three guys that, by the way, we're going to see on the field this fall uh, with the first team, in my opinion, or certainly playing snaps with the first team to some degree, and that's what we're going to talk about. To, to what degree is what we'll discuss today. With I know you guys. I know in the last pod, we didn't mention a couple other guys. We've been talking about it in every podcast about guys committing. Just knock this out of the way. Um, Daniel Calhoun on July 5th. We think it's going to be Georgia. I mean, it, it, fine. Okay. You know, Georgia just got that Unizi guy or un, Unizi or whatever. I don't have to learn his name because he's not at Alabama. Um, yeah. But Alabama should get Casey Poe. I think it's on July 12th or 15th. 12th or 15th. July 12th for him. Okay. And then, um, of course, we talked about Jacob Good committing on the 6th. Uh, so just a couple other announcements, stuff like that out of the way. But I really wanted to spend this whole podcast because a lot of people have enjoyed your your countdown. Trey Amos, who is a transfer, and uh, I'm going to put his picture up right here. That's, that's a good-looking dude. Um, but Trey Amos, uh, what do you think about him, and how much can he help us? He can help us a lot. I, I, I think what's, you know, is he good enough to play at Alabama? Absolutely no question from what I've seen. And I went back and I watched some, uh, some clips of him at, at, at Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, really good player, man. When he went in the portal, LSU, Florida, every, everybody jumped in trying to get Trey Amos. And, uh, and, and we're lucky that we, we got him in, in Tuscaloosa. He is a pure cornerback. Uh, cornerbacks can play the star position. I think that's an interesting – a thing for him possibly at Alabama because look these are the positions we have open right I mean you, you bring in a transfer he's going to want to start right away with starting where he was so he's going to want to start right away at Alabama we have uh for cornerbacks you know two corners and and, and the star position right well Kool-Aid's going to be one corner we know that for sure the and that that's in stone the other corner for now is uh Terry on Arnold uh, and right now at star is probably Earl Little. So that's who he has to beat out. You know, can he beat out Terry on Arnold? Maybe. I, I say maybe. Uh, if that doesn't work out, can he beat out Earl Little at star? Maybe. Uh, I don't favor him to do either. Uh, I think in terms of just my guess, he ends up being sort of the top backup cornerback. You know, Kool-Aid and Terry on start. Trey Amos is the first one off the bench. If either one of them gets gimped up or has to come out, lose a helmet, whatever, he, he he's out there. And I think at star, he probably cross trains as an older veteran type kid. He can learn it quicker, theoretically. Uh, also, interesting point about Trey Amos, two years of eligibility. So hopefully if it doesn't work out for him in terms of getting the starting lineup, he sticks around because he's a guy that could easily replace Kool-Aid in 2024 because I think we all know Kool-Aid's going to leave and, and enter the draft because he's going to be a high draft selection. And in fact, Terry on Arnold's also draft eligible. I, I don't know that he would go anywhere, but it, he can. He's eligible to. But I, I like that we took Amos. Look, if it wasn't Amos in that role, and this is why, why do you take him if you don't know, if you, if you don't have a need for a starter, why take him? Well, because if he wasn't there to be the backup to Kool-Aid, the backup to Arnold, the backup to Little, the backup would probably be, I'm guessing, Antonio Kite or maybe Des Ricks. Antonio Kite's like a redshirt freshman. Des Ricks is a true freshman. You took Trey Amos to get older, to have more veteran presence around because, uh, you know, you might need someone to play. When you're first off the bench, there's a really good chance you're going to play. And, again, if Trey's listening to the, the show, I, I'm not saying you're not going to win a spot, buddy. I, I'm, I'm saying that – the competition's tough for you. You're going to have to beat out Terry on Arnold or you're going to have to beat out Earl Little. And they're good players with very bright futures at Alabama. 
uh, one way or the other. So I think it's going to be tough for him. But could he? Yes. If he plays, would he be good? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Uh, 6'2", 197. I mean, we were just talking about in the last show, Luke, about how big Jameer Grimsley is to play the corner spot. Because whenever you talk about Jameer Grimsley, it sounds like you're talking about a safety. That's what you'd say about Trey Amos. Long, long arms. You saw the picture before. Physical. Vicky looks like a safety, but he's got great speed and cornerback skills. And he was an all-star cornerback this past year at University of Louisiana, which has a good program, produces good players, produces NFL players. Trey Amos, outstanding player at University of Louisiana. And, man, when he entered the portal, there was a swar- – he got swarmed and uh, chose Alabama. Now, I just looked up his ESPN profile just for the heck of it again. Um, I hadn't looked at it in a while. He's got one interception in his career. Do you know that? Does that yes. bother you? Uh, yes and no. Uh, first of all, uh, as with most kids that end up being a really good player at, at a place like Louisiana, he's a bit of a late bloomer. He wasn't highly recruited. Uh, he wasn't recruited by SEC schools out of high school. He went to Louisiana and didn't play much first year, second year. He wasn't playing very much. Uh, he's just one of these late developing kids. Uh, so it doesn't bother me. Another thing about him only having the one pick is this, Luke. I, I don't know who their other corner was last year. I would imagine whoever it is wasn't nearly as good as Amos. So Amos probably wasn't thrown out a whole lot. I imagine whoever the other corner was got picked on quite a bit because Amos will be an SEC level player, you know, playing at one cornerback spot. So I, I guess that's it. But most kids that go to Louisiana and end up being great players are the two star types that are developing basically while they're in college. And uh, the fact that he got off to a slow start over there and wasn't an immediate starter doesn't, doesn't really bother me too much. We kind of covered this territory to some extent with Jalen Key the other day, the, the UAB safety, very similar story, not recruited by hardly anybody, goes to UAB and doesn't do much at all for two or three years. By the time he's ready to play, boom, he's an all-star. Um. Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Okay. Sometimes I, I, I don't even know myself. Uh, I need to tell everybody. <clears throat> sometimes I need to tell everybody about FanDuel now, Jimmy. You know how much we love FanDuel. And we've been talking about FanDuel forever because they're a great sponsor of ours. You need to go check them out, FanDuel.com. You will absolutely love this uh, this this app. It is fantastic as I put the little crawler up there. Um But FanDuel, take your first swing at Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount and bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20 and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from money line to over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run to who's going to strike out. Whatever you want, you can bet on it there. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. It's like the biggest sports book in America. You can't go wrong. When you win, you get paid instantly. No screwing around like we got to verify your account and we're going to put, you know, they do all these stupid verification things. Ah, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets that's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel official partner of major league baseball on the next podcast we're probably going to keep on with your countdown jimmy i mean this kind of countdown season um but you know after the fourth i was listening to a uh another national show day and they were like july 4th is great and i was like yeah i love independence day he's like no because it makes me feel like we've turned the corner and like now college football is really about here and that's true. You got this SEC media soon. days. This is how soon it's here. Yeah, not only SEC media days, July 17th, that's just two weeks, July 17th. Big 12 media days, which is on television, and I, I'm looking forward to it because it's college football. Big 12 media days is July 12th. Wow. All right, well, let's also talk about now Mr. Damon Payne, who makes your countdown. What number is this, number 40? 41. 41. Um, 41. Damon Payne is, is the 41st ranked player on this uh, Alabama football team, 41st, which means just math-wise, right, you should, you should expect that he would be solidly in the two deep, and I think that's exactly where he is. Uh, look, he, he was a highly recruited guy, right, uh, that redshirted, didn't play at all his, his redshirt year back in 2021. 
So last year was really his first year to play, and we didn't see much of him in September. But lo and behold, the calendar turns to October, and all of a sudden, number 44, he's out there with the first team and pretty much played some snaps with the first team from about the mid-season point on. Uh, just a handful of snaps. Then I think one game, I think it was Mississippi State maybe, uh, we had a player hurt, and, and he played even more snaps with the first team and really kind of showed out. Uh, he's a good player, uh, definitely a good body. I mean, sometimes when, you know, defensive linemen can either be great all stars or they can give you solid snaps. And at minimum, he's a solid snap guy that they can, they can go out there and play with the ones and hold his own and, and help you out. Uh, now, we're, now the next step for him is, okay, are you going to be great? Uh, maybe this is the year we find out. Maybe it's the next year uh, as a redshirt, you know, sophomore like he is this year. He's still got time, and it does take some time when you're talking about guys that play at the line of scrimmage. But this is a highly recruited guy uh, that's just now sort of coming into his own. And with Jamil Burroughs gone, like we talked about in the last show, Damon Payne is ideally suited to take up some of those snaps that Burroughs was going to play with the first team. Payne is uh, more athletic than Burroughs, not quite as physically large. You know, Jamil Burroughs ended his career at Alabama about 6'3", 309, had to lose weight to get down to 309. Payne's, Payne's the kind of guy that's got to gain weight, you know, to get to 300. Uh, and he is now. I mean, he's right around that 300 mark. Uh, again, very good athlete, good run, good against the run. Not so much a pass rushing presence as a run stuffer, but that's that's the job first and foremost up front. So uh, Payne's a guy we're going to see play some level of snaps every game uh, with the first team. Uh, number 44, you can expect to see him out there as early as the first quarter in some games, but definitely a guy that's going to play if we're just guessing anywhere as low as six to nine snaps and as much as 20 to 25 snaps, I think you'll see him out there every week. Uh, should be noted, Jimmy, just I, I don't want to deviate from the countdown too much, but I just saw where K.J. Bolden has announced his commitment date of August 5th. He has a top five Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Florida State, and somebody else that's not going to really factor into it. Um, I can't remember. But, um, you know – where do you think K.J. Bolden ends up, of course, the, one of the five stars in this class? Yeah, as of right now, this one's got a lot of drama. First of all, he's a five-star. I mean, this you know, we all know the impact Caleb Downs has made at Alabama right off the bat. I mean, Caleb Downs, in all honesty, based on what we've been able to piece together from insight inside the program, Caleb Downs was playing with the first team safeties in like the second or third spring practice. I mean, that, that's, that's how fast Caleb Downs jumped in the lineup. K.J. Bolden is similar. I'm not going to say he's quite as good, but similar. And he's a guy that would make a run at the first team, even as a true freshman. In terms of where he's going to go, I, I don't know. I even hate to guess. Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. I think his other finalists are more uh, long shots. Uh, I suspect it's Georgia, Alabama, or Ohio State. For him, I would put them in that order in terms of my guess right now is Georgia with Alabama, an incredibly close second, and Ohio State more third. But that's a guess today. Here, here's something I, I, less of a guess that I'm pretty sure, Luke, and, and this may surprise some people, but this is just this is the way it is. There's a good chance he doesn't know. I, I think he's still – he set the date because he wants to be done before his senior year. August 5th is going to be about the date that his high school team is out there practicing or they had just started practice. He wants to be done so he can focus on his senior season at Buford, you know, that great program he plays for over there in Georgia. He, he probably doesn't know, and that's the thing. I mean, everybody's like, where's it going to be? Well, it's hard to know when the kid doesn't know, <laughs> but – I, you know, we, if, I, if I had to guess, I'm going to say Georgia. Uh, I'm not going to be even surprised if it's Alabama. Uh, I'll be mildly surprised at Ohio State. Um, and then one other thing that, you know, the own three message board has out there right now. Apparently somebody has kicked a hornet's nest and said they feel like DeMarcus Riddick is now trending to Auburn. What do right. you think about that? Uh, could be. 
It could be. I, I, I w- I'm, I'm not saying never on DeMarcus Riddick to Auburn. Uh, where, where now I'll be surprised is if he sticks with Georgia. I mean, that, that would be the real surprise. Uh, less of a surprise if he chooses Auburn. Uh, much like I just said about Bolden, if I'd pick today, I, I think DeMarcus Riddick is going to Alabama. That's my that's our latest guess at BOL is Alabama. Uh, but we are aware that Auburn is a serious player here. And, you know, it's probably as much as my fault over karma because I, I, I posted this yesterday on the board, uh, not as a, as a let's start a conversation thing, but sometimes I'm in the middle of one conversation and something occurs to me and I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and write this down while it's in my head. Hugh Freeze, I thought when Auburn hired him, I sort of envisioned Auburn being super aggressive NIL-wise. I mean, like Texas A&M, Miami level, <laughs> aggressive with NIL offers, that really has it. it. So far, and it's early, so far the Hugh Freeze recruiting at Auburn hasn't happened like I thought it might. It's less aggressive than I imagined. But he's going to sign somebody we want. I mean, that's going to – it's at least one and probably more. So, you know, is that one guy read it? Maybe. You know, maybe so. I mean, obviously what Auburn has to offer is, of course, NIL, so does Alabama. But if they're getting fewer big names, then maybe it's more money for just a small select group. Maybe. I mean, who knows how that works over there? I don't know how it works over there. I'm just saying, aren't we going to be pretty shocked if if we sort of shut Auburn out? I mean, in terms of the big names uh, that, that are being recruited by both schools. So, uh, I think Riddick to Alabama, if Riddick chooses Auburn, if Perry Thompson chooses Auburn, uh, am I going to faint? Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I could see either or both uh, to Auburn. But my guess today, as we're sitting here, in terms of what I know, uh, Alabama for Riddick and Perry Thompson as of July, you know, second, third, when we're taping this. You don't know the date we are currently on or the date when I'm going to post it. I know what the date is. I do not know when this is going to air. I do know know the date as I'm standing here, which is irrelevant to anyone listening to this. All right. Let's uh, let's take a break. When we come back, it's time to talk about Keon Keeley. And we're back. Keon Keeley, Jimmy, I'm going to put a picture up just to make Notre Dame fans mad. Uh, There he is in a Notre Dame jersey. Of course, he was committed there for a while. Um, he, I think he works out, um, good player, uh, expect him to come in and make an instant impact. Don't we? I do. That's why I have him ranked, uh, 40th, which is, you know, I'm the 40th best player on the roster and, and, and I admit going in, okay, I'm going to be wrong here about Keon Keeley in one direction or the other. I kind of put him in the middle of where I thought, cause maybe he belongs back at 60 because he's a true, for a few reasons, he's a true freshman. A lot of true freshmen struggle. A lot of true freshmen struggle with learning the defense. He's not only a true freshman, he's a late arriver. He didn't get here till the summertime. All the other, most of the other freshmen, almost all of them showed up in January, learned the, the, the defense back in the spring and went through spring practice and a practice 15 times. This dude just shows up in June. And then lastly, he's going into a crowded spot. He got Dallas Turner. He got Chris Braswell. Even have Quindarius Robinson, who was great on A-Day. Keanu Coat, who was great on A-Day. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander, who was the number one prospect in Alabama two cycles ago. Uh, he's going into a crowded, crowded position. Uh, so for all those reasons, I probably should have him at 60. Until you watch Keon Keeley's high school tape and you wonder, why can't this guy be Will Anderson? <laughs> and Will Anderson not only was a day one, game one starter, Will Anderson was one of the best players on the team game one, day one. Keon could easily be that good. And when I say that good, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, Will Anderson's one of the great players in Alabama football history. Keon Keeley, his upside is that, one of our great players ever. That's what his upside is. So, May, I, I put Key on a 40 in part, Luke, because I can make a case that he should be at 60. I can also make a case he should be at 20. So this 40 is going to be wrong. It's just an acknowledgement that 
hey, we better put him fairly high because he could be a real significant player. Now, the thing is, when Will Anderson got here, I think there was a, a more of a path to that starting lineup. Uh, I, I, Keon Keeley doesn't have such a path because Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell are both basically NFL ready and, and returning starter upperclassmen. I, it's hard to imagine Keeley beating those guys out. But I can foresee, Luke, him being like an outside linebacker that comes in on some third downs and some passing downs and is sort of a designated dime pass rusher. That would be a great first-year role for him. And, uh, boy, he would really help us. And let me tell you, he will make some highlight plays even this fall. Yeah, I, I, you, you sort of did like, was it King Solomon who, like, we shall split the baby in half. Uh, you just said, I, I'm going to be wrong one way or the other, so I'm going to be super wrong both ways. Uh, that's right. I don't know if it was King Solomon or not. I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, it is King Solomon. That's pretty, uh, very biblical, very biblical of you. He's the one that, uh, well, I, my name is Luke, and I, that is a book in the Bible, I think. I think it's right in between Frank and Janice in the Bible, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, uh, nothing like some good old Bible jokes, but, um, all right, Jimmy, that's going to do it for today's podcast. Thank you guys so much. Hey, look, I don't know when you're listening to this, but we want everybody to have a happy fourth. I'm at Orange Beach chilling like a villain. Jimmy's in Tuscaloosa doing his thing. And uh, we're going to have some more podcasts for July 4th, but we want to get that out of the way because some people listen to these like, uh, you know, they sort of binge listen or whatever. So happy fourth to everybody if you're listening on the fourth or whatever. Um, anywho. That's going to do it for today's podcast. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and being awesome people. Go to FanDuel. Go to Bird Dogs. We appreciate you. Until next time, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.